and the people from all over town come running. People who are not predisposed to hearing any of this, they come running. And the thing is, most of those who are running are the same people who've been, you know, all about crucifying Jesus. And so they they weren't sympathetic, they had chips on their shoulders, they weren't looking for a new kind of God experience, they knew what was going on, they knew what to do at the temple during this feast, and really weren't looking for anything outside of the ordinary. And then they show up. At this place where crazy stuff is happening. There's, you know, one commentator, you know, they, they, they figure the number of people there. There's someplace around like 120 figure, give or take. There's this bunch of people together, gathered, praying. There's fire, there's some kind of whirlwind that ain't letting up. Things are crazy. And then at the same time, picture yourself walking into this. All of these people are speaking different languages. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's a nut house. And so imagine yourself as one of those people who just come into town to grill. And all of a sudden, something crazy going down. And so, they walk in, and it's got to be loud. I mean, even if those of us in this room all started speaking out in, if we all had different languages, in, in different languages, you know, German, French, Russian, that's a fun one, different alphabet. But the cool thing is, it had to be this mob, this mess, this noise, this ugliness. And... These people all come running, and they come to it, and it wasn't just a couple, it wasn't like a handful of people, because if you fast forward in this chapter, it says that 3,000 people come to know the Lord and join the group, and you know that not everybody bought into what was happening, so at least 3,000 of them buy in, so there had to be more than that. So I mean, it is a full-on riot, and everybody's talking, but some people start to understand what they hear. And i got to believe, and this is, this is where I bring it back to De Niro, i got to believe that there's this De Niro moment where there's like this Parthian guy, and he's walking into this thing, you know, and, he, and he's here, he's not expecting anything, and he walks into this thing, and he really he's, he, he's expecting to make fun of some people. And he walks in, and all of a sudden he hears something that he recognizes. And he just got, he, right, he's just, he walks into the, you talking to me? <laughs> Because I don't see anyone else around here. you got to be talking. Are you talking to... You get it. I'm not that good of an actor. But you can imagine in your head it's much better there, so go with that. The idea is he walks up and he's like, oh my, what the heck is going on? You know, he certainly wasn't looking for this. And it's not just the Parthian. It's the Elamites, the Mesopotamians, Judeans, guys from everywhere. Romans, all kinds of stuff. And... The cool thing is, when, when, when it goes through this list of who everybody is, it's actually mapping out the Roman Empire. It starts in the east, and as it goes through this whole list, the, the Medes and the Eliamites and the residents of Mesopotamia, it starts, it starts kind of on the east, and of course I'm going to do it backwards because you're looking at me. Anyway, you get it. Um, it starts in the east, and it sweeps to the west, and then the north, and then when it goes through, it ties it up, and actually at the end it says, you know what, and Rome, right, smack dab in the middle of the Roman Empire, and then it just hits both east and west sides of it. It says, you know, uh, near, near, the, near the sea, the Cretans, and all the way out in the desert, the Arabs. It says, you know what, there were people from most of the known world here, and these languages that are being spoken are hidden with each one of these people. And it's this crazy, amazing miracle. And what are they hearing in their own language? It says they're hearing the word of God. It says they're hearing, uh, you go to the next slide if you would, Jenny. It says they're hearing God's mighty works. This is from the message. They're speaking our languages describing God's mighty works. And so on this amazing, crazy birthday of the church, God downloads all of these languages. And they're, they're hitting it. It's not like they're struggling through it. You know, It's not like me taking French. They can actually speak it, and they're speaking it intelligibly, and people are understanding them. And the thing, the thing that, that's even better about this is Galileans, at this time, they kind of had a bad rap for not really even speaking their own language very well. You know, they were kind of the guys that you sort of made fun of. You know, my, my wife's from Pennsylvania, so they make fun of the Pittsburghers because they kind of just mush all their words together. And so where you would say down there, they're like down there. And... Um, <laughs> You know, and, and it, it depends where you where you grow up, and I'm, I'm not going I'm not going to say anything because I have no idea where most of you are from. But there are sections of Vermont that certainly have accents that you know. And uh, <laughs> so it's this idea, right? And so they're like the Galileans, man, they can't even speak their own language. You speak in Parthian? What the heck is going on here? And so you know, I, De Niro 
all right? Me? And uh, so, no. the really cool thing is they can't explain it. They're saying, what is going on? I'm hearing about God in my own native tongue. And God's speaking my language. God has somehow enabled this dude in front of me who doesn't even speak well on a daily basis to have this conversation that I can hear above all of the roar of this place and pick out and understand there's got to be something going on. And not only that, God wants me to know because he's speaking partly. And that's the whole point. The, the, the fire was not the point. The, the whirlwind was not the point. You know, tonight, this amazing venue is not the point. The music, not the point. God is the point. And the purpose for those who are drawn to God is that they would know that He is who He says He is. And honestly, how could that poss be possible in any way? Unless He could speak their language. Unless He could speak our language. Unless we could understand what that message is. Because otherwise, it's just something that's really nice for other people. And here at the beginning of the church, God makes it personal. And he says to each one of those who were gathered, each one of them who came running, his mighty works. And it doesn't enumerate what those are. And it doesn't tell us exactly what was said. But I, I know that if I were suddenly endowed with French, which would make Madame Beaulieu at U32 High School very, very happy, um, and all of a sudden I could just share what I know about God, I think I'd be pretty giddy about it. I'd just be trying this thing out, you know? I'd just be pushing the envelope, you know? Can, can I say this? Can I, I can say that too. This is amazing. Anybody ever watch Chuck? No. Nobody watch Chuck? No. Okay, move on. Remember that movie though? Um, but the idea is that God speaks that language. Boom into that guy, he's speaking Parthian, the Parthian guy hears it, and he starts to understand. He says there's something going on. And that's just the really, really cool thing about it, because uh, as far as I know, we didn't have a sign-up sheet at the door, but nobody's Parthian here. Um, and if you are welcome, hopefully, of course, Adam would be Parthian. Um, hopefully you understand everything through the translator. But the fact of the matter is, we all come from different walks, we all come from different places, we all come from different backgrounds, different ideas, different upbringings, different church experiences, and God speaks each one of them fluently. And if God can create the universe by just speaking it, he's got to be pretty good at this whole linguistic thing. And so I know that he speaks to each one of us, I know for myself, I know he speaks drunk. I know that. I know that he can speak through that. I know he speaks addiction. I know he speaks depression, fear. I know he speaks self-harm. He speaks old. He speaks young. He speaks proud. He speaks broken. That song we sang tonight, you know, that just gets me every time because there's parts of me that still need to be broken and there are parts of me that are just busted up and need Jesus. But he speaks that. He speaks proud. He speaks humble. He speaks comfortable. Sometimes. And he speaks turmoil. He speaks out of the whirlwind sometimes, and other times it's a small whisper. But he speaks that place in each one of us that we've let define us. Those guys who were, who were there, Parthian, from, the, the, from Libya, from Rome, from Crete, they were defined by their nationality. We are defined potentially by something else, but by whatever it is that we are defined, God speaks that, and he says to us, let me be that which defines you. Let me be your definition. And that's ultimately his plea. And in Matthew, Jesus sums it up because he's a way better speaker than me. But in Matthew, he says this. Are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out in religion? Then come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I don't even know exactly what that means, but it sounds amazing. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. I know what that means, and I'm glad. He says, keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And 
I've been walking with the Lord for a good number of years now, but there are many, many, many days when I would like to take off the heavy and ill-fitting and live freely and live lightly. But the cool thing is, no matter what, no matter where any of us are in this journey, there are ups, there are downs to the road. There are on-ramps, there are off-ramps. But God notices every one of them, and God notices every one of us. And he makes an effort to talk to us. He makes an effort to talk to me, and he makes an effort to talk to you. He knows our language. He knows the words we speak. He knows the thought patterns that we have. And he can speak through them. And so no matter why you came tonight, I know a lot of you came to help us launch this thing, and that's amazing, and that's really, really cool. But no matter why you came, God knew. And so God's speaking, and God speaks to each one of us. And the cool thing is, it's not for a limited time only. It's not like when you leave church or, you know, when, when, you, when you read your Bible, then that's the last time you're going to hear from you. He kind of keeps doing it. That's the cool thing about this keeping company with him. And so the question that we all have is what we do with that, what we do with that fellowship that we are afforded with God. And he says, I know you. I know what you're going through. I know what you're clinging to. And he says, let that be me. Let yourself go and just claim Jesus. He says, I hear you. I see you. I speak your language. Let's talk. That's who our God is. And that's how church starts, is by a bunch of people listening to what God has to say. Sometimes it's taking notice and turning around. Sometimes it's confrontational. And sometimes it's just sitting back and saying, all right, God, I hear you. But whatever it is for you, I know that the God of the universe is speaking. And I know that this is the beginning of the beginning of this brand new church, and I'm just so excited. And I thank you guys for coming. I just want to pray over you. Lord, I thank you for everybody in this room. Lord, I thank you that you speak each one of our languages, each one of our dialects, each one of our thought patterns. Lord, that you speak clearly to those parts of us that we allow to define us, God. And I just ask that you, above all else, will be at the center of who we are. So God, I just ask that you would speak. And I know that you will. I trust you and I praise you. I thank you for all of those here. I pray your blessing over them, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. And now back to my wife. <laughs>